So as any other disorder or syndrome or even disease, it's important to know the uh, how the cause of the disease, whether it's genetic or environmental, how does it affect our body system. The brain is one of the body systems that is highly affected in uh, Phelan McDam syndrome. And um, of course we have the tools to look at brain activity or brain functions in human or in kids with the Phelan McDam syndrome, uh, but we're still limited with the uh, abilities to go deep to dig into the mechanisms that underlie the deficits caused in Phelan McDam syndrome. So it's important to have a model that allows us to look deep into the brain, into the mechanisms at the brain level, at the cellular level, even at the protein molecular level to understand how, how, what is the effect of this syndrome on our brains and once we understand that we can be able to target the mechanisms that are affected in this syndrome. So we know that the Phelan McDermott syndrome is caused by a deficiency or defect in the gene called Chang3. Uh, this gene is responsible for the production of the protein called Chang3, which we know plays an important role in the uh, brain. The way um, we develop these models is actually by mimicking this uh, deficiency, this defect that we see in the kids with Phelan McDermott syndrome. We mimic it in the animal model. So basically we use genetic tools to target the gene in the model to um, to affect it and therefore to disrupt the protein that is encoded by the gene. Uh, we look at the behavior, we test uh, for example attention or social uh, behavior in these rats because we know these are two of the symptoms that we see uh, in Phelan McDermott syndrome and also in autism in general. Uh, we look at the brain activity, something that we cannot do in uh, human um, looking really deep at the level of the cell and the communication between the nerve cells.